This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to show you through your Flagstaff high wall pop-up model 27 HW 27 KS all right so I'm on the door side of the trailer here so moving towards the rear Just so you know this is an outside kitchen here Basically, you're just going to pull this out. Um, this needs to be plugged in. So you have a plug right here for the range top, right? And then you have a quick connect here to plug into this male piece right here. And that's how you connect the range top to the um, propane system. Now you also have a a grill with this trailer. The grill will sit right on the, this rail here and there's another LP connector right here that will attach to it, okay? Um, okay, so let me just walk around the outside. You've got a deep cycle marine battery. You have uh, two 20-pound uh, LP tanks. This uh, is an automatic changeover regulator here. So it's just going to draw this one down first, then this one back and forth. This is not a tank selector here. This is just a gauge. If you point the, uh, the indicator at, at this tank or the other tank, this being the door side tank, this being the off door side tank, uh, it'll just tell you if there's any gas in there. If it turned red, it would be, mean it's empty. But right now it's green, so you have gas in both tanks. Also, you have a uh, power tongue jack. Uh, the thing to know about the power tongue jack is you can pull this plug out of the top here and put the, the same crank you would use for your stabilizers. It's a three-quarter inch crank or you can use a three-quarter inch drill with a, with a socket attachment. Anyway, you can pull this plug and you can crank this manually if you have to just to get yourself out of trouble. So, uh, Also, this is your up and down switch for your um, power wench to raise your roof. Now keep in mind that you always want to make sure that all the latches are undone before you use this power winch because it will damage the latches if you try to send it up with them hooked. So if you've got little kids, you've got to remember that, to keep in mind that they love switches. And there, there's no safety or anything on the switch. It's just, it's just there. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, your power cord is a 30 amp, 30 foot long power cord, as you can see. Um, your city water connection is right here. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer. Uh, you do have an onboard tank that you can use if, you're, uh, if you uh, need to, but the most common way is just hook the water up right here and it's ready to go. Okay, this down here is for your air conditioner. So I, whoops, I will pull the plug out from there, as you can see it. Then I'm gonna plug it in up here. It's good to do this before you, um, before you put the roof up, otherwise you're going to have to get up on a ladder to hook up the air conditioner, okay? And this right next to it is just your, your, your uh, outside shower for kids and dogs and feet and what have you, bicycles, whatever you need to hose down. And this is just a coax from the outside through to the inside of the trailer. You can use it for campground cable, an antenna, whatever you want to use it for. These are service panels for your refrigerator. The controls for your refrigerator are inside the, tent, or the trailer, so you don't have to... Uh, uh, access that. That's just for service. This is the exterior of your water heater. The water heater works on gas only and the switch to operate it is inside. I just want to show you that this is how you drain it right here. This, valve, this plug right here. So it's an inch and a sixteenth socket. So keep in mind that's how you would drain it. Now you never want to use this unless there's water in the tank. So you always have to make sure you have water in the water tank before you turn on the uh, the uh, the gas, because you don't want to damage it. So, if you if you if you don't, it's called dry firing, and that's that that can damage your tank. So you always make sure there's water in there. Um, okay, so this is you got two dumps here, basically. It's not exactly like a like a travel trailer. In some ways, it is. You have a regular dump here. This is the valve fort right here. Right now it's in, for example. You, you, you'll hook the hose on here, you put the other end of the dump station, then you pull out on that valve, and that will just um, 
dump your, your black tank. Your black tank is toilet water and waste. Now you, you have a galley tank or a gray water tank here. It works the same way except there's a fitting here and you can put like let's say a, a garden hose on it uh, if you want to and you can run it as long as you want to a, to a bucket or to a drain or whatever you need to do. But that's strictly for sink and shower water. Uh, so two different systems. That's black water, which is toilet water waste. That's gray water, which is sink and shower water. Also your hose, just so you know, this, this little circular uh, thing here, this, that's where you store your, your dump hose after you've used it. So just keep it out of the way. Of course, that's a stabilizer crank there. You got one on each corner. All right. <laughs> These things you see on the side are just vents. There's also another vent up here. Um, you have to inspect your trailer. They suggest you do it three times a season. So figure in the spring and in the fall, once in the middle of the summer, you just look at the sealant on the roof. Like You'll check the sealant around your vent here, around your vent pipe, at all four corner caps, any place you see caulk from the factory. Never use uh, uh, hardware store caulk. You're always going to use Proflex. In this case, it's called Clear Proflex. Don't use the stuff at the hardware store, it's not the same stuff. You also want to check along this seal right here. Let's see if you can see it. It goes all the way around the perimeter of the trailer. So you always want to check the caulk. Any place you see caulk from the factory, you're just going to check out. And if you see it start to separate or crack, you touch it up immediately. It's very, very important to keep water out of your trailer. All trailers are like this. You have to, if you own a trailer, you have to inspect the seals. All right, I mentioned that you, you would use city water most of the time. If you go to a, like a state park that has, it doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, but it has a fill, fill station when you first go into the campground, you could fill your fresh water tank right here, and it has an onboard electric pump, so you can pump the water uh, from your tank. So even if you don't have plumbing on the campsite, you can still use everything, all the, all the water in the, the, the entire water system uh, by using your, on, your um, onboard water tank, okay? Fresh water. All righty. So, keep in mind you want to torque. We've torqued your wheels. Um, the factory's torqued them. After you pull it 100 miles or so, you want to torque them again. Uh, you figure about 100 foot-pounds, 95 to 110 in that range. Okay, it's important to do that because they're alloy wheels and, and you need to snug them up periodically. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is my, my associate's going to unlatch the latches. Okay, he's just going to go around and do all four of them. I just want to point out to you that this device right here on the roof is, is a Wi-Fi Ranger. I'll show you how that operates inside. You also have a rack system where you can put kayaks or bicycles up on there. So keep that in mind. But he's going all the way around. So keep in mind that whoever operates the wench is, in, is responsible for confirming that all the latches are unlatched. So, all right, go ahead and take it up. Keep going. So this is this is the tension line. This is a gauge, basically. It, when this is snug, it's it'll tell you that the roof's at the right height for the screen door to fit in. So as he puts it up, he's going to keep an eye on this. Um, so go ahead. About right there. Okay. So now I'll back up so you can see it. So we're all the way up. Now this has a slide room on it, and you have to remember that uh, when you're closing it up, the slide room will come out, or when you're opening it up, sorry, the slide room comes out first, and then, and then the bunks go out, and you'll, when you're closing it, the slide room goes in first. After it goes in, I'm going to show you this a few times, we're not going to close it right now, but I just want you to remember that you have to pull this canvas out when you're putting it away, because it's the most common way people tear it. Um, so you can stick your arm right through here all right, to pull it out. So the reason you're doing this, I'm going to try and show you here, that there's the bed rail is right there. Here, you can see it right there. Uh, let me get a picture of it right. Uh, that's not a very good picture. Right there you can see it, okay? Right there. So if you try to push the bunks in, when this canvas, canvas is on the inside, you can tear the sides of it. That's the most common way to tear your canvas. 
So whenever you're putting it away, you're going to make sure that this is pulled out. Of course, we're setting it up right now. I'm just telling you this because I'm going to tell you again when we put it down just so you can remember. That it's very important that you don't tear the sides of your slide out canvas. Okay, so let's walk around to the other side. This is brand new. This hasn't been prepped yet, so we're kind of doing both at once. Um, you're going to keep your poles under here now. Okay, so they did. The first, when they put it at the factory, they put all the poles here. And that's where you should always keep them. Two poles will have a black plastic end on them. That's for the back of it. Two poles have a, a, a white plastic end. That's for the front. So go ahead and pull some uh, poles out from there, uh, Chris, and we'll, we'll put them in place. Always try to store them in the same place all the time. That way, uh, you'll, you won't have to look for them. You don't, you'll know if you forgot them. It's, normally when we put them in, it would be with the, with the plastic ends pointing out so you can see them. So you need one more black one. You got to get them all out anyway, so you can just pull them all out, whatever you want to do. Okay, so we got the black one. So that's the rear. So bring, about, bring them on back to the rear here. We'll move the cleaner's cart out of the way here, if we can. Okay, so these, um, you always put these poles in place first. I just want to show you that on the, for the back, you're going to put, start off with the second one up, the second slot up, and then go right there, like so. Let me get back here. Sorry about my lousy camera work here. Okay, now go ahead and pull the slide out. I mean the bed out, I'm sorry. It shouldn't have to resist, it shouldn't resist you, you just pull it out. Keep going all the way out so it doesn't go anymore. A little farther. There you go, right there. So then this has hospital corners on it right here. So you see, I'm gonna to try to do this up close here. You're gonna go over the corner here, and it's got a snap, so you're gonna snap it in place like that. Get this in place, hopefully you can see that. Then you're gonna pull the, the, the skirt over it like that. You do that on all four corners. That way they will not ever tear. It just gives it double the strength. Okay, let me see what he's got over here to see where we're at. Okay, so this is not exactly correct here. So these are hospital corners. So this comes up here like this, and then it comes over. There you go. That just doubles the thickness there so it doesn't push through. All right. So we're gonna do the same thing. Boy, this thing is big. It always, always amazes me how big these things are. So we're gonna take the other two poles out now and put them in the front. When we put them in the front, the bottom slots, we're gonna put it right in the center slot right here. So we're going for the center slot. Um, that way it won't bind up when you're, when you're setting it up. When you slide them in and out, if it's up too high or too low, it can bind up. So we're gonna go right in the center. There you go. Okay, get the other one. Okay, so grab it from the center and pull straight back again, just like you did before. This one's a little harder to get to because of the tanks and everything. Um, so, give it a good yank. Nothing? <laughs> like I said, this hasn't been opened before, so we're prepping it at the same time. Grab the end of it. No, down there. Yeah, and we're just going to give it a, see what's happening here. Okay. There you go, you got it now. So go ahead and pull it out. We'll have it all adjusted for you and everything, so it's not going to be difficult to operate. Come out a little farther, a little farther, a little bit more. Okay. Now do the hospital corners. Okay. 
There you go, perfect. Okay. So now we're going to pull the slide room out. Oops. So we do this by going like this and then like this. Other way, towards the inside there. There you go. Okay, now grab it at the handle in the middle and pull it on out. That's it. So we can, people put this together different ways. You could do it now or later. I'm talking about the Velcro here. You're gonna, re you're gonna adjust it later on down the road. Just, um, but So you can get it started here, but you're gonna tweak it a bit so you keep all the bugs and rain out. Um, people will work out a system that works for them basically. Okay. All right, so that's good. You can just leave that as is. So now, except for the, like I said, this has never been set up before, so we're, we're going to prep it as we go. So we're going to pull this rail out. This, is, this unscrews here. Boy, they got that tight. So the steps come down like that, and you also can adjust the height of the legs using those pins, and there's holes in the legs. No, this, this just comes off now. Yeah, I just have to remember exactly how this new one comes off. I've not been a while since it. Oh, there's, there's a latch behind here. Now back here. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you sort of pull those in, and it'll, it'll re release it. There we go. And that you're just going to stow away somewhere, okay? All right, so we're going to adjust the legs just a little bit. So go ahead and pull up the legs and drop the pins. So, so it's sitting on the feet instead of the, instead of the um, edge of the, uh, of the door itself. So go ahead and pick it up now and go up a few notches. Uh, now pick up the steps. There we go. Oh, that's too high, but there you go. Let them down a little bit and put a pin in. way too high. Here. Yeah, we're gonna go like this and just come up a little about right there so the steps are level. We can get the other one in. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna let it down a little bit so push those in. Okay, so now about right there, hit the pin in. Hopefully you can see this. Make sure it lines up with the hole. Just slide the leg up and down so a hole lines up with it. There you go. There you go. And do the same thing for the other side. Cool. I just wiggle around, it'll go through. There you go. Okay, so now we've got that. So let me go inside here. I'm gonna see if I get some power going here. So let me, these are all switches here, obviously. Right there, there's three of them. Okay, so here we are. I'm just gonna show you around here. Um, okay, so this, this will become your bathroom once it's set up, all right? So what we're going to do now is you can pull the pole out from underneath here, right? And then you're going to hook it into here. Here, let's just drop these first. I'm sorry about the camera work. I'm, I'm up close here and I'm trying to do both and I know you can't see very well at times because I'm not. Okay, just let that hang, hang now and then you're going to hook them right under there, okay? okay. The pole will come up like that. Let me get out of your way. There you go. 
Make sure you're on that nub when you put it up so you don't accidentally push it through. Remember how I showed you with your hand now, with your fingers behind that plastic piece and use your, use your muscle on your thumb? There you go. You got it. So there you have it. We'll do the same thing for the other side. After you've done this a few times, it'll be, it'll be very simple. You'll work out a system. Everybody will do their part. Remember, you want to go on top of the, the cargo net. There you go. You get it? brand new so it'll stretch out and all that but it's always first when you first get them they're really tough to wrangle with it they loosen up with time like I said the easiest way is to put your fingers behind that plastic and use the muscle in your thumb wow. here let me do it here you hold the camera Alright, so this one is going to go up the same way. Go ahead and put that one up. It's much easier to do though. There we go. There you go. Alright, so we're pretty much set up. This will become the door for the bathroom. Right now we're gonna we're going to um, put this together a little better. I mean obviously like I said it's never been set up before. So when I when we pick up uh, the video again I'm gonna end now and I'll pick it up and we'll show you how the door goes into place how this whole thing sets up but um, we'll break right now and we'll uh, continue in part two. Thank you very much.